Hi, I'm Dr. Brian Kaufman, a retired family doctor and a CLL patient myself, and the co-founder, executive vice president, and chief medical officer of the nonprofit CLL Society. And I'm here to discuss some of the important papers from the European Hematological Association's meeting in 2024. And now I'm going to discuss the results from the phase one study of the novel BCL2 inhibitor, Sonrotoclax, in combination with Xanabrutinib for relapsed refractory CLLSLL and the fact that it showed deep and durable responses. I'm going to start with the bottom line. The combination of the new BCL2 inhibitor, Sonrotoclax, with the BTK inhibitor, Xanabrutinib, produced an amazing overall response rate of 97% in relapsed refractory CLL SLL. This research uh, uh, was presented by Dr. Stephen Opat from Mo Monash University in suburban Melbourne, Australia who gave one of the rare coveted oral presentations on behalf of his international colleagues on the last day of the European Hematological Association's annual meeting, EHA, 2024, in Madrid. In the way of background, we know that the treatment for chronic lymphocytic leukemia or C and small lymphocytic lymphoma, CLL, SLL, has dramatically improved lifespans with the new therapies for many, many patients. Still, most patients who need treatment will eventually relapse, some repeatedly, and too many may eventually become refractory to most, if not all, therapeutic agents running out of options. Combinations, therefore, are appealing in relapsed refractory CLL, SLL, especially if they work orthogonally or at right angles or by independent mechanisms and are synergistic. Such is the case when combining the two classes of drugs that have revolutionized CLL-SLL treatment, namely the BTK inhibitors and the BCL2 inhibitors. Let's start with the BTK inhibitors. This class includes ibrutinib, acalabrutinib, pertabrutinib, and xanabrutinib, the last one being the one in this study. The other drug class in this therapeutic partnership are the BCL2 inhibitors, of which only one, venetoclax, is approved, but others are in development, including Sonrotoclax, which is the drug that's used in this study. Other BTKI BCL2 doublets have already proven very effective in, in difficult to treat patients. The hope is that this particular novel duo will even further improve on the already strong results in seeing other trials of BTKIs and BCL2 uh, inhibitors. Who, what was the method and who are the participants? Patients with relapsed refractory CLL, SNLL, uh, were first started on xanabrutinib to decrease the risk of tumor lysis by de debulking the tumor before starting on the ramp up of Saronoclax. Prior BTK use was allowed if disease had, progress had progressed while on therapy. Let's look at the results. 45 patients with relapsed refractory CLLSLL were, were enrolled across multiple different doses of Sonrotoclax. There were 4 at 40 mg, 9 at 80 mg, 6 at 160 mg, 20 at 320 mg, and 6 at 640 mg. Five patients had not yet started the BCL2 inhibitor Sonrotoclax and therefore were not included in the outcomes. The median age was 65. 28% of the patients who were tested had the poor prognostic marker of deletion 17P, and 17.2 had the poor prognostic, 72% or 13 of 18 had the poor prognostic marker of unmutated IGHV. The median number of prior treatments was one. Seven patients had had prior BTK inhibitors as their last therapy. The median follow-up was only 17 months, so the results are pretty preliminary. The recommended go-forward phase 2 dose will be 320 milligrams of Sonrotoclax, though the 640 milligram was well tolerated. As always, let's start with the adverse events. The most common adverse events that occurred in 12 uh, patients, or 27%, were COVID-19 infections, contusions, and low neutrophil counts.
just below that in 11 or 24 percent of patients suffered from diarrhea, nausea, or fatigue. The most common serious or grade 3 or higher adverse event was also a low neutrophil or neutropenia, which was seen in 9 or, or 20 percent of patients. The good news is that there was no tumor lysis seen and there was no atrial fibrillation and there was no adverse events that led to death, discontinuation, or dose reduction. Sunrotoclax was held in 14 patients for a median duration of a week with half of those due to COVID-19 infections. So let's get to what we all want to hear about, the responses. 32%, uh, 32 patients across all dose le levels could be evaluated. The overall response rate was 97%, or 31 of 32 patients. One patient at the low dose of 40 milligrams had stable disease. The complete response rate was 50%. And let's just look at the numbers based on dose. 25% of those on the 40 milligrams, 50% of those on the 80 milligrams, 67% of those on the 160 milligrams, 56% on the, on the 320 milligrams, and 40% uh, on the 640 milligrams. The median time to complete remission was 9.8 months, with a range between 5.5 and 18.2, suggesting we still may see new remissions develop, complete remissions develop. Of the four patients who could be assessed who had had prior BTK inhibitors, all responded with three achieving a, a partial remission and one a complete remission. I'm sorry, with two achieving a, a, a partial remission and one uh, a, achieving um, a, a partial remission. All patients uh, with um, seronoclax and zanabrutinib uh, at 160, 320, or 64 who reached, reached, who reached week 48 were undetectable MRD. Let me say that again. All patients who were treated with sunrotoclax and xanabrutinib, either at the 160, 320, or 640 milligrams, who had reached week 48 in this study, had undetectable measurable residual disease to the level of 1 in 10,000. Treatment is ongoing for all but one patient in the 40 milligram cohort who progressed and stopped therapy. So let's discuss this and try to come to some conclusions. All the patients who were at least 11 months out were undetectable measurable residual disease to 10 to the minus 4. The combination was well tolerated with no atrial fibrillation, no tumor lysis, and, uh, which are both problems that have, uh, that have caused concern with prior BTK and BCL2s. These results are remarkable being so early, and they're likely to improve over time. This treatment holds the promise of a safe, well-tolerated, effective, all-oral, limited-duration therapy and relapsed refractory CLL and SLL. And although not mentioned in the abstract, it likely works well even with those with uh, poor prognostic markers. It seems to be checking all the boxes. It is likely that another combination, a calibrutinib and venetoclax, will soon be approved. These kinds of combinations give CLL patients much to look forward to. On the website, we give a link to the abstract results from the phase one study of the novel BCL2 inhibitor, sonrotoclax, in combination with xanabrutinib for relapsed refractory CLL SLL shows deep and durable responses. Thanks for listening. Stay strong. We are all in this together.